A lot of news to get to, man. How yeah, about let's start. Uh, this let's, is going to turn it? This is basically turning into the Bitcoin celebrity segment every every week. We were, we were just joking about last week. Hey, we're not going to talk about this every week. And then Bitcoin drops thirty percent. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? I mean, this is pretty crazy. And, and let's talk about that a little bit because we've seen this drop. Uh, I've said there's a lot of leverage in this space. We had this conversation yesterday before this drop, right, on the way to golf course, where I was saying all these places offer yield, right, interest, and where is that coming from? I'm still not too sure how, you know, again, yield farming and you have to put in a certain place, but you know, you talk about six, seven, eight percent yields on some of these things. When the market crashes, that's what you're seeing now. You're going to see leverage come out. I want to see how that works and how if they're still able to offer that, where it's coming from. Obviously, if they're going to give you a six percent, whoever it is, whoever it is, whatever place that you're at and they're placing that token, they say, hey, we can give you four percent or five percent on this. That's fine. But who's ever providing that means they'd have to generate a bigger return to that. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it. And that's easy to do in crypto because crypto is on fire. It's not so easy to do anymore when you just see a 35% collapse in the market. So, you know, the leverage that you're going to see come out of this, it could it could get a little crazy. But a lot of this was spurred, I guess, by China, right, Daniel? Yeah. And the the crazy thing on the on the leverage is just like Robin uh, the Robinhood app. You know, you can, you can take out so much and you have all these kind of horror stories of um, people – gambling with money they didn't have and then get margin called and all that. It's the same in, in every um, exchange or every sector. And there's definitely leverage in wrapped Bitcoin and all that kind of stuff. The interesting thing on the China, Frank, is there's news headlines and Twitter feeds out there floating around that China's banned payments and cryptocurrencies and all kinds of things. And yet then you have the other, the naysayers and no, no doubt Bitcoin backers saying, hey, this is nothing new. This is this is yeah. their same stance. They're just warning again about, you know, don't speculate. This is really risky. This is real volatile. Um, you guys touched on it in your interview with Bobby today. You know, China is not a fan of crypto because they're so such a controlling society and a controlled government. Um, that shouldn't shock anybody. So it, something else has to be here. Either a fund got blown up or I, I, I don't know. It's just hard to we do live in the information age. So bad news travels faster. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to believe that. That triggered people to get so nervous that everything just unwound 30, 40%. But hey, that's it's one thing to say how volatile crypto is and then when you experience it. So anybody that's holding crypto now and sees that down this morning is like, whoa, okay. Yeah. And, and you got to be very, very careful. Even our newsletter, we take small positions uh, and we build them up over time because a lot of volatility, a lot of our positions were like 2% in and they took off tremendously. So now that you see them coming down, it's going to give us opportunity to maybe purchase a little bit because these things really, really took off. But- yeah, you're not going to see the gains that that you've seen. You can in some new names, but it's just you can't expect that with every name. And that's what's happening in a bull market, right? Everything goes higher. But yeah, you're looking at more than eight billion positions were liquidated, and that's over the past 24 hours. Eight billion. Yeah. Uh, and you're right when it comes to China, right? That's one part of the news, and that's that's really what's driving it, right? I guess because if yeah, every place that it says it's down is because of China. But like you said. When China came out, they said, you know, virtual currency is not a real currency and, and should not and cannot be used as currency in the market, right? That that was a joint state issued by the People's Bank of China, the government, right? So China's basically limiting institutional activity, which is already limited, right? They didn't change their stance. Nobody thought they were going to reverse their stance. But why is this surprising? Because this is the right move for China because they're about to launch their own digital currency. What's the surprise here? I mean, it, it's basically news that came, like, enough to push the market down 30%. Maybe it's it's just... You know, that train that's on the, the top of a hill and you just put maybe just needed a push because it was inflated and there's a lot of leverage and a lot of people making money in this thing and Dogecoin, which we know is a fake, is going high. A lot of stupid stuff is happening. And even the people who, who are diehards in this industry see it as well and say, hey, look at this, you know, shit coin pump dump, all this, you know, whatever they call it, even uh Bobby Lee called, you know, the shit coins and stuff. <laughs> but you know, the China thing should have been factored in, but you're right. There's something more bigger here, and, and I wouldn't say it's Elon Musk because Elon Musk reversed his stance, and we can talk about that, which I thought was funny, and that pushed Bitcoin and Dogecoin down a little bit, but not not. This is before the massive sell-off from today, right? So, you know, what is it? I mean, when Musk, <laughs> dude, I have no. I mean, this is your favorite guy in the world. I have no idea. I mean, I know I understand the attention. I get it. I see it. I know it personally because I've seen it, Daniel. In in when I worked on Wall Street, where I worked with a lot of great, great people. And street.com was the greatest stepping stone. They hated that I said that, but it was because everybody went there left because they just, you know, it was just, it was hard to to succeed and be big there, right? You couldn't, you had to go someplace else. They had their people there and that was it. And you're not going to be able to break into that. So a lot of people earn this, and you see, they, they write for all the major newspapers across the world and everything. But 
you know, it, it, it's when I'm looking at, at <laughs> you know, just crypto in general coming down. Uh, I mean, you know, it reminds me, and even I saw Kramer talking about it too, but I don't know how much further it, it can come down from here. I, I really don't. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see the 20,000 to 25,000. JP Morgan was out with a note saying about fair value ish uh, was about 35,000. And just since I've been at the office this morning, it's been around 40 down to 30, and now it's about 37. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy volatile. Elon Musk and all them, th that's a good segue because I want to know what do you think would be the next announcement to come out? And what I mean by that is uh, Elon Musk, yeah, he's, he's just a. Uh, if anybody's buying Bitcoin because of Elon Musk, I wonder if they're going to hold it like he says they're still doing. He came out today and said Tesla has diamond hands, which is the fun uh, thing thrown around all the time on social media about holding forever and all that kind of thing. So, you know, Elon Musk, it is what it is. Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy, tweeted out yesterday, May 18th, that they bought an additional 229 Bitcoins for $10 million dollars at a little over 43,000. That brings their cost basis to 24,450 per coin. And and that's why I, I lost my train of thought for a minute because I just checked on Bitcoin, which is down 15%. So it was down 17%, it's down 15%, still down a lot. Oh, yeah. But what I was saying about Elon Musk, when I was talking about the street, is I saw a lot of people actually uh, you know, become, not famous, but they started going on CNBC. And then they started going on all these news channels and kind of like Elon Musk. I mean, you know, he's a billionaire and so is Mark Cuban, but the attention that you need and how you change as a person when that happens, I've seen it firsthand with everything, with, with everybody there. I mean, Kramer first started his show as well. And, you know, right, I was there right at the beginning, right before he started and right through for five, the first five, five years or so. And, you know, just people who are on that show and, and people who go into, I mean, they just change where it's like an addiction. I just feel like, where am I going with this? Elon Musk, I mean, a huge supporter of Bitcoin, we bought it, you know, on the balance sheet. We know that you sold a little bit so you can make sure your numbers are really good for the quarter and you made your earnings. I get it. But now to come and say that, you know, we have to find a, a, a different cryptocurrency because you know the energy that it takes up and electricity i mean what has changed in three four weeks with this guy uh, and uh, is it the attention is it but i could tell you the reason why tesla is so high daniel the reason why everything this guy does is, is you know if he gets into dogecoin it takes so he's got a, a loyal following it's a religion these people are gonna buy they don't look at valuations okay at all you could say that w w with everything that guy has right the valuations are incredible by doing this with Bitcoin, you're, you're starting to segregate your audience and those diehards. And they're like, wait a minute, you know, we're a diehard Bitcoin. Yeah, Elon Musk is there. We love him. We're going to buy Teslas with Bitcoin. Now you, you kind of like, you know, you're going to start losing that crowd. I think it's very dangerous. And maybe that's it. I don't know. But it, I don't think this, this move is China. I think you're right. I think it's something that, that's even bigger. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see play out. Like I said, you know, you have uh, last week there was headlines that were saying how 0.72 uh, Steve Cohen and other big name hedge funds are looking to get into the crypto space. We know Goldman Sachs is doing up their uh, crypto trading desk again, which they started and canceled during the last huge bull and bear market in 2017 and 2018. Um, JP Morgan is more involved now. So somebody is taking advantage of this huge volatility. And what's the, the big takeaway here, I think, for investors is if you own, if you know what you own and why you own it. So if you like Bitcoin at 60000 or 50000 how the hell do you not buy it at 30000 or 35000 Because nothing fundamentally changed other than you have news about China maybe cracking down. If you're not anticipating governments and or anybody else trying to crack down and with the climate change area, it, it's not going to be smooth sailing. So that, that to me is what's interesting. If you're holding forever and now you're thinking about selling, it just proves money is emotional and you better know why you're in what you're in. That's, that's the big takeaway. It is a takeaway, but I can tell you, it sounds easier than, than say, it's like, hey, I'm going to buy this stock, but I want to wait for it to come down 20%. It comes down 20%. You're not going to buy it because now it came Absolutely. down 20% for a reason. And you're like, oh shit. So it changes your thesis. But hey, good point. And full disclosure, I'm down on a couple positions and it sucks. But again, nothing changed as to why I bought some. So yeah. I did buy a little bit more in one, uh, mm -hmm. one of our recommendations. And yeah, it sucks to see red, but it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's tough with those emotions because you're talking about people that, you know, if you own Bitcoin or even Ethereum, where Ethereum went is insane. I mean, it went from like 900 
to 43, 4,500 in a couple of months, like two months or so. I mean, that move was just insane. And yeah, you, know, you look at people that have maybe whatever. I mean, you've seen accounts go from ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to to hundred thousand millions of dollars, right? Now you're in millions of dollars. And you're like, holy cow, this thing's worth a million and a half. Bitcoin's down almost fifty percent from its highs. Ethereum is down sharply. Litecoin's down sharply. A lot of these things have pulled back, and now you see that balance, and you're like, holy, shit, you know, I want to get out. Like, how don't you get emotional about that? Oh, Especially absolutely. if you're not used to to investing or if you don't have a lot of money and everything and which is a lot of people in this industry they have their whole nest egg in here this is all they do yeah. even some of the guys i told bobby lee so you know they have other projects within crypto but a lot of it is based on you know where bitcoin did the, the the crypto industry continue to grow but you know it just goes to show you and another thing here you talked about michael saylor every time i talk about peter schiff i do get a couple of emails saying frank what are you talking about you know i, I don't like talk about anyone who, who's not here to defend themselves but, but the reason why this guy is an asshole is he's out there calling out Michael Saylor. And this is why I don't like like Schiff. He's out there. He's the first to call. I told you, look, it's down 50%. This is a crash. Uh, all this crap. He's calling him out, calling all Bitcoin people a bunch of idiots, even though he said it was going to zero and he said to sell it at 5,000, 10,000, right? But more important is if you look at this guy's performance and his funds, you got wrecked if you invested this guy the last 15 years. You got wrecked. They're all underperforming their benchmark. Their benchmark. So that means you would have been better off not knowing this guy, right? So I, I don't want to bring that up. But when you are just going after people all the time and want to debate them and you have this thesis and it's never changed, which makes them one of the most dangerous people ever. If you have a perma bull or perma bear, then trust me, I've worked around these people. People who don't change their mind will get you destroyed. And they're still going to make their money in the media, just like, you know, just makes money with gold, has all those things set up overseas and stuff like that. That's fine. Even, and he, this, this guy is charging 5%, four and a half to 5% fees on his funds. Are you kidding me? So I just hate when people like, you know, if you are icon and calling him out, that's fine, <laughs> right? I, I get it. That's fine. But for this guy to be calling out anyone, I'm like, come on, man. I know he, he's a great, he's a celebrity. He's a great celebrity. I wouldn't ever invest in the guy. You're down tremendous. He missed the biggest bull run in history. But still, it's and I, I'll debate him all day, but I am a big fan of gold. Now, I believe inflation. The last five weeks, you saw a massive transformation for me. I've never really spoke of oh, inflation. Like I said, this is, you got to worry based on the numbers, and they've gotten worse, and now everybody's kind of on board with the inflation thesis, and he is an inflation guy, and he's smart when it comes to looking at inflation and, and statistics. He's been calling for inflation for about 25 years, and it's been wrong. Now he's going to be right, and he's going to take all the credit and write another, revise his crash book for the ninth time. So the market's finally, you know, probably going to crash. If it does crash, I don't know. Anyway, my point is gold, four month high, and Daniel, like, Daniel's laughing at me going on this rant. Oh, uh, that's a good I one. Just, like, you know what? Just be fair. Like, it, 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 seriously, hey, I have I'm nothing not, against I, that. I just, I'm just enjoying it. I'm not, you know, defend yourself. But I me. hate that shit. I mean, I give me a you. break. It, it's kind of like, you know, a guy talking trash to Michael Jordan after Michael Jordan maybe has like, you know, five game streak of playing bad. It's like the, the New York Yankees. He only Yankees. had 45 points instead of 55. <laughs> yeah, but it's like the New York Yankees. I remember Jeter was, was did, it was like a 15 game stretch or something. He didn't get a hit or whatever. And I went to Yankee game. They're booing, they're booing Derek Jeter. How do you boo Derek Jeter? I'm like, are you kidding me? You're booing Derek Jeter. Now, Frank, you know I don't know anything about baseball. But Come that's on. No, New I know York. Who that is. They're just the worst fans ever. Hey, anyway. the, big, the big winner is gold, no doubt. So, yes. And gold bugs are taking, and again, Oh, they're everywhere. You go to Twitter. And I don't want to agree with Frank on everything, but I do not, and we've talked about this in the past, I don't understand the whole Bitcoin or gold thing. I understand that you get passionate about things. Anyway, if you're a gold bug, and I've been going through some Twitter feeds and websites, and it is hilarious because you have to admit you have a great argument. Like that store of value is falling 50% in days and hours, uh, huge pullbacks, a lot of volatility. So no doubt the conversation when things like this when it's at 60, it's a store of value and all that. But when it gets cut in half, the gold bugs definitely have an argument here. Um, I'm really surprised gold's only up about 1%. It's up less than 1%. Gold stocks are doing okay. It's kind of a mixed bag. I definitely think gold will... I don't understand how you don't have both going forward. Like even Bobby Lee said he owned both. Yeah, and that I, was and really I, cool, I really right? I'm like, well, you know, these people like want to hate each other and gold, and like, why can't you own a little bit of both? And you know, I've owned a little bit of both, and you know, and all it's going to take is if you get millennials to buy gold stocks and they start going up two, three hundred percent. Yeah, it's not a thousand, but that's volatility, and they're easy to buy. So it'll be interesting to see that. It's a great hedge against inflation. It's got history behind it. Gold's not going anywhere. Um, but 
it, it'll be interesting to see how much money flows into it, I guess. And I'm I surprised mean, it's not up more today. And it's good to see gold up instead of down with everything else because the markets are pulling back about 1%. That's one of the biggest things, Daniel. And this whole thing, I think one of the biggest takeaways is for me, if you have institutions, institutions love, I'm talking about hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars. They love to buy assets that are uncorrelated with everything else. And everything has been correlated for a very long time. Ever since 2008 credit crisis, we see how correlated everything is. Uh, you know, you want to buy banks and energy. And yes, some sectors outperform other sectors, but a lot of it is, is correlated, right? Everything's going up and going down. Uh, today, you're seeing the market really get nailed over 1% down across the board. At least last time I looked. Every time I look, I lose my train of thought, so I'm not going to look at all the statistics. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you're seeing Bitcoin getting crushed, and now you're like, okay, is this an inflation hedge? Because inflation's here, and now this thing's crashing. So now you, you kind of lose that thesis. And a big thesis for institutions, hey, this is... You know, different. This acts on its own and they love that, right? Something that's uncorrelated, but now you're seeing everything down at the same time. That's my biggest takeaway here. Not, you know, Musk changed his mind or China, which again, China was never going to get, they, they launched their own digital, they're going to launch their own digital currency. Uh, currency. They came out with that news uh, a few weeks ago, I mean, a little bit over a month ago. So uh, of course, I mean, they want the market to themselves, right? So this is not new news. Like you said, that, to me, that's the biggest takeaway that not too many people are talking about, but uh, we'll see where this ends up. There's a lot of leverage and it could go lower, but it is interesting. Like you said, with gold and gold, one of my largest positions across the board, gold, uh, I did have a large position in uranium. I sold half of them probably a little early just because I want to see uranium prices go higher and they haven't gone higher. They're starting to go a little bit higher now. Uh, so, you know, I'm well positioned for this. Hopefully you are as well. We have gold stocks throughout our portfolios in both portfolios uh, in Curse of Venture Opportunities and Curse of Research Advisory. And I think I, I like this steady move. It's not like a huge rush into gold where it's up 15, 20%, 25%. Next month's going to be down 20%. It's nice to see like more and more money pushing into this. And you're seeing it even in the institutional levels where I, you know, track the flows. And Daniel, you get those reports as well from Bank of America. We track the inflows. Gold is actually seeing money flow into it for the first time in about four or five months. So, you know, not surprising here that's going higher. And also not surprising to see all the gold bugs out on Twitter. Going crazy saying, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even though it, it, they're still down tremendously on their bet saying that Bitcoin is going to go nowhere, you know, because most of these gold people hate Bitcoin and that's why they're out because this way they can say, I told you so about Bitcoin. Also, look where gold is. We told you so. But it's just at the end of the day, you can't listen to all these people. And, and I just hate when people are extremists because extremists usually get destroyed and everybody that follows them gets even more destroyed than they are. And that's why, you know, looking at perm bulls and perma bears, especially if you're following those guys on Twitter, right, Daniel? I mean, you could set up where, hey, I'm following a lot of guys in gold, following a lot of guys in Bitcoin. And even a Bitcoin crack gets crazy. I mean, how, how oh, aggressive absolutely, they've yeah. been through 40, 50, 60. You got to buy. It's great. You got to buy. It's the greatest thing ever. It's going, it's going, it's going. So it's just a little crazy, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it's entertaining, you're going to have people on, uh, you know, really polarization of any argument, which, uh, you know, that's okay. So just try to sift through the noise. You don't want to get over leveraged or one way or the other. I just, I guess I sound so boring and silly. I just don't understand why you wouldn't own both. I mean, I really don't.